Hello everybody, this is Z Doctor, and with me today is Typical Manga Fan, and today we're going to be going to over our Typical Manga Review of One Piece, Chapter 773, Half and Half. And we open here with a new color, new part of the cover, cover story. We have Watatsumi, the um, big old guy from Fistman Island, apparently explaining why he's there in the first place, and the fact that he's pretty much responsible for what's going on here. Like, it looks like he saw the offerings, thought, hey, these are nice, and decided he wanted to help people by taking buildings from the water and giving them to them. <laughs> so all those buildings we saw crashing down earlier because he was throwing them at the place. He was throwing, he was throwing buildings at the city. Yeah, uh, that's not how you do it, but I guess this guy is obviously... Uh, you know, he's, very, he's, he's very immature in, 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 his, in his development, so... Yeah, he's, uh, he's very, uh, childish. He's very childish, I mean, Yeah, he's... Yeah, we we got we got a lot of that from when we first met him earlier, and we was fighting Sanji and Jinbei before. Yeah, um, but I, I think he's learned his lesson. Uh, I mean, Luffy will always be in his head, so yeah. that's good, right? I mean, he's not doing it to be malicious. He's he's trying to be nice. He's just very bad at it. Uh, uh, except I don't think this is where the thought it's a thought that counts because honestly, throwing buildings at people is a little dangerous. Well, like I said, he's very bad at it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, so let's we, go. We start the chapter proper off with Bartolomeo wondering who the hell this new guy is who just took down Dellinger and everyone else around there. And he's moving so fast that Bartolomeo can't even see him. I can't even properly track him. Yeah. Um. It it seems that Haku uh Hakuba I think his name was right. Yeah. Um. Uh, could be could easily be their trump card. Uh. If if used correctly, but um. Unfortunately, I, I think he's a little out of control. Yeah, as we'll get into here, he, he's not going to be easily controlled. He doesn't want to be helpful there. And Bartolomeo yeah, remember did, this is what did, happened with um, during the, he remembered that this happened during the Rebecca's part of the Coliseum fights. What were you about how to say, does, uh, how, how does Cavendish's face change like that? I mean, I know it's a personality <laughs> change, but holy crap, the face, just like, how do you do that? I don't know, like, you, you see that every once in a while. You're like, there's like differences, sometimes subtle, sometimes just flat out Practically a transformation of itself. Yeah. I'm not really think I didn't I haven't really thought too much about it just because it's mostly just there to differentiate Hakuba from Cavendish. And of course, we get this our answer to whether or not he's actually on our side by him attacking uh, Bartolomeo. And at least, you know, he's got this barrier, so he's just like, "Holy crap, man! You <laughs> you're so fast!" So obviously, the only thing there's the only thing that Bartolomeo could do is just keep up his barrier because yeah. if he takes it down. Just one opening, and that's all Hakuba needs to basically slice him. Yep. Actually, I do uh, like this little dot section here, like on the next, on like the next page. Here, it's like where it keeps saying like, "in this" at the end of the sentences. There, it's like, it's those are certainly Kevin. This, but that face is that, is some other dude in this. Who could that possibly <laughs> be in this? Yeah, I, I noticed oh? that. It was kind of weird. One of this is related to that weird little speech quirk he had a few chapters ago. Do you remember that? Uh, he was like he was saying no. something at the end of his words, like sentences. Can't remember what it was right offhand, but. Ben? Was it Ben or something? No, something like that, I think, yeah. Maybe it's Robin? Yeah. I don't think... Maybe. Anyways, it's like... Too, it's way, boy. It's, way too, it's too long back. I... Yeah. I mean, with the vacation and all that, we didn't have time to really think back about the other stuff there. But anyway... Yeah. Um, like I said, Bartolomeo was freaked out, but then Hakuba notices Robin climbing, climbing up the wall. Yeah. And then he's attacking, and then he's like, Don't you dare touch Robin Senpai! And then, yeah. of course... Robin has this really awesome moment where she's just like, "Nope, speed is not use is useless against me," which is really awesome because yeah. it means that she's definitely very uh, a lot more powerful. Well, I mean, she was always powerful, but she's a lot more powerful than um. This than goes. The, this also goes back since you didn't since you didn't go through like the earlier stuff with her. In the series like you might not realize, but this is that goes back to how she was first inter her powers are first introduced. Like she actually does this to a guy and pointing out that speed, power, they're all useless against her. Yeah, I, actually, the first time I met her, I saw, I saw her was in um, uh, was when she supposedly blew up Mister Eight's boat ship, but um, I don't know how that turned out in the oh. actual manga. Yeah, um, well, she did blow it up, but like, she also made sure they didn't die. I, suppose, I think is what it was. Yeah, uh, but, but anyway, yeah. yeah um, the, the, regardless, the, yeah, the part I'm referring to happened in Alabasta when she's fighting Pell, the Falcon. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, anyway, well, Hakuba is faster though, way, way faster. Um, yeah. Also. I, it took me a second glance to catch this, but not only has she got her in one of her usual grips, arm grips, but she's also got a giant hand holding him, too. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think. I think. Although, although she probably could have done this, when, uh, you know, before the time skip. I think her reactions also needs to be better too. I mean, clearly, Kakuba is so fast that sometimes you don't even get to react. So while well, while speed may not technically work against her, I mean, if, she, if he catches her off guard, you know, yeah, she may not have time to use her abilities. Yeah, but that's like her abilities are pretty quick overall. So it's like if yeah. she's a, if she has even the slightest awareness, she can react. Yeah. I mean, like I said, if she's off guard, that could cost her. But at the same time, it's She's a she's been an assassin for like twenty plus years, I think, and on her own and all that. Catching her off guard is probably not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, and of course, the, the probably the times can probably even enhance it even further. So who knows yeah. how? But uh, of course, uh, we get her being awesome is of course uh, you know normal. Uh, I'm not surprised. As my, as my and Bartholomew gushing over that fact is also normal. Yeah, it's actually awesome how you're just like, yeah, how cool is me, you know, to actually think, you know, uh, you know that I, I could be the one to protect you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, of course, this is weird. Cavendish actually comes out. Um, yeah, and he's perfectly aware that Hakuba is there. In fact, he's ticked off that Hakuba came out at this point. Like, he pauses yeah. to Robin and points out that, yeah, he's pretty bothersome. <laughs> he just hacks and kills everything around him indiscriminately. I- I'm actually confused because... Uh, later on in the story, I mean, you, he actually gets gets like half of his control back. But isn't he supposed to be asleep? Um, so if he's awake, doesn't mean doesn't that mean that uh, Hakuba can't come out, or is it, or is it that Hakuba could always come out? It's just that when he's asleep, that's when Hakuba is at his like it can has the easiest chance to come out. You know what I'm saying? It, like it could be a thing where Kevin just suppresses him, on, and when he's asleep, that's when Hakuba gets his chance. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like Hakuba can come out if he wants to, but it's like a struggle. And Hakuba's just like, you know what? I might as well just wait for him to sleep. That way, he has no, there's no resistance. Yeah. Um, of course, did Hakuba? Does that mean that Hakuba came out because it just happened to be in a moment where he he thought he would have some fun, or was it because Cavendish somehow got knocked out? Could probably got knocked out at some point. We don't know the specifics. The enemy will probably fill in the blanks for that one. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Oh yeah. See, so much. Uh. Sleepwalking, so Nico Robin basically talks about it, and of course he he actually Hakuba actually talks, which he hasn't done before. Yeah, like, and, he, and he says like I'm gonna kill you, Rot Nico Robin. Um, yeah, he wants to just like hack her up, which is actually interesting because he actually knows her names. So that means that he's actually aware of things that happen when he's not around. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it, and makes you wonder. I think it makes you wonder if the same thing is true of Cavendish as well. Like if he's aware of that, like exactly what Hakuba does. Well, he would have to, because otherwise he'd be like waking up like with people like dead, dead prostitutes, all that stuff, around, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, he is. He's got the full on Mr. Hyde thing going. So yeah, probably. Yeah. Did Did Mr. Hyde know? He He knew, right? Um, well, he knew of. Well, Jekyll knew of Hyde. I don't know if they were aware of exactly what he if he was conscious during those times. Well, but, but I, how about Hyde? Was I mean, was Hyde? Did well, Hyde, Hyde was know? the evil one? I, I know, but did Hyde know about uh, Jekyll? I really don't know. I don't know the story well enough. Um. Uh, Anyway, um, like I said Bartolomeo is watching all this and wanting and watching pretty much Kevin just argue with himself, and eventually um sees that he's gone all two face, half and half. Title drop. Yeah. Um. I wonder. Okay. How does he maintain that shadow? It's just like holy crap. That that face. The face must be like. Is that is that what he just looks like without the makeup? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, so he, I, said, I think it's argument. just a I think it's just a way for Oda to just like so wits his wits at any given moment. Just a little visual shorthand. Possibly, but uh I uh, um he they're arguing with each other of uh, uh, so it's kinda of weird. Uh they have a little golem. I wonder how Gollum this is a big Smeagol Gollum moment. Um Yeah. So, so if there's a voice actor, we know who's to who's to call. I <laughs> said <laughs> I'm, actually, now you mentioned, I'm kind of curious of who's voicing him in the anime in the anime right now, but I'll I'll look that up later in my own time. Oh well, well um, voice actors have a lot of, a lot of range. They could probably do pull us off. Um, yeah, say you are very good at that sort of thing. I've seen anyway. Yeah. Um, he finally gets himself calmed and in control and asks Robin to release him, but Robin's like, "Are you serious? Like, really? No, no, wait, really? <laughs> pretty much Robin's reaction. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course. This is when uh, Gladius is, you know, gets his chance to explode basically the entire like area they're on. Um, yep, he just decided to just blow up the whole damn wall. And yeah, and let's see what else. So he basically explains that you know his his abilities, or he's going, he's going to. They're gonna, basically saying like, um, you know, it's, this is they're going to rush to the wall. Uh, what happens to Rebecca if I don't get there? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and Bartolo is basically, you know, or. Bartolo basically yelling at at Nico Robin basically to get out yep. there, but 
and he makes the move to attack Gladius, which Gladius points out is the correct thing to do, because if he's beaten, the wall will not explode. Of course, then he starts shooting his other weapons at Bartolomeo. Yep. It's it pretty much darts made out of his hair. Um, punk hair. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Um, oh, I think Bartolomeo has the punk hair, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And he, uh, and he actually so... coats his hair in poison. I mean, you gotta wonder, does he get his shampoo specially made or something at that point? <laughs> ah, probably. Who knows? And he... Dude, Cell did this once, okay? Come on. Uh, Dragon Ball Cell? Yeah, Dragon Ball Cell. Remember, because he blew himself up? Oh, he tried oh. to. Oh, yeah. Well, we I don't think we've gotten... Oh, okay, that's right. When he gets all super fat. Actually, there's something he reminds me of right here, but I can't think of what it is. Like a... I don't know if it was something else in One Piece, or like a monster from a game or some other creature, but... It's something when he's all blown up like that he reminds me of. Not Cell, though. Eh, yeah. There's it, a lot it, of fat people. If it comes to me, I'll, 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 put it, I'll put it in the notes here later if it comes to me. Okay, um, let's see what else. So, basically, if he, stim- he gets stimulated in any state, uh, his entire body will burst. Uh-huh. Um, and thousands of needles will just pierce, uh, you know, everything. Yeah, well, so basically, it's Cell. <laughs> yeah, he basically, like, either, even if he explodes, he's, not only will he explode, he'll also end up shooting Robin anyway. But if they don't let him, ex- but they if they keep him around, then you know the wall will burst anyway. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, and of course that's who he explains that, and Bartolomeo's like he's thinking about. It. He's like, hey, what? What should I do? You know, Robin's life is 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 it my number one priority? Um. Uh. And then he's like, so to stop from to stop the wall from blowing up, he's basically got to beat him. But how does he do that? Um. Oh, but he's like, wait, right next to Robin is a dude I don't give two shits about. <laughs> it's yeah. hilarious. He's got a meat shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you gotta love his yeah, turn of a... thought right there. <laughs> like, I'll just give him, I'll just make, let him be a human shield. Yeah, so she's good. Uh, of course, uh, Takaba's, Takaba's having none of that. <laughs> yeah. Um... And he's like, okay, and he, fi- he finds a way to figure it out. And, and this, he actually talks about another thing, too. He can only deploy one barrier at a time, but I thought that he he, he couldn't. I mean, I mean, he could, because he he made the stairs, which are well, technically different barriers, right? No, it's just one big barrier just reshaped. Oh, okay. Like, like how he, were, does the, were... he does the racket early, later on, too. Okay, because I, they, those are connected, right? Because those barriers, I thought they were, those barriers were not connected. And they were like, st- they're kind of like Nico Robin steps in their hands are not really connected. They just use yeah. as ledges. I think it was uh, like one long barrier. Just, he can shape his barriers. He just okay, I, well, I know that, shape. but I think, yeah. But he can only shape it for like a certain length, I think, right, too. So. Yeah, there might be a um, limit to that, too. But basically, you can only make one barrier at any given moment. So, Because that's, that, that's how he got hurt that at that point, wasn't it? Like, he did the barrier and then... He couldn't block an attack himself. It wasn't that he could. It wasn't that he, he. wasn't that he said he could. He couldn't use more than one barrier. I think he said that he just had. He there was like a quote unquote, a, like a length or like a, a like an amount of barrier he could he could put out, and that he well, already ran out. And that he, kind of that kind of ties into that as well. Like one big barrier at a time. Maybe yeah, he so could I do think, smaller I think, ones together, but. Yeah. So what what it comes? I think what it comes. Well, he's not using any barriers now. So I think what it comes down to is that there are two weaknesses: one that he can't make too big of a barrier, and two that he can only make one barrier at a time. So right. there's two weaknesses right there. Yeah. Of course, I mean ultimately those two don't come in because at first because you know he usually isn't in teams and he's a small person. I mean he's, well not small small yeah. but he's smaller than a, like a ledge or something like a, I mean yeah. not a ledge a wall. Yeah, so he's fighting on his he's fights alone most he's been fighting alone mostly anyway. So yeah, you're right. Doesn't really come into play. It's. But, which actually fits with the fact that he's not really much of a team player anyway, so that actually works out pretty well for him. Well, it's amazing that he, even though he's not a team player, he, 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 he like, admires the Straw Hats, who are team players. Who yeah. D- and, he's, and, he's, and he's made good use of it, like, to help them out. Well, but although, is that foreshadowing the fact that he can't join them, or that, you know, because well, if he joins I, them, it's like, it's, like, too good, you know, it's too good to be true if he joins them. I don't them. expect Bartolomeo to join them. I think it's going to be like we've seen, like, with Don Chin Zhao and them. Where he'll offer his him and his crew services to the Straw Hats at some later Luffy would probably refuse that. I don't see why. I mean, Knowing him. They've been, well, like I said, he'll at least offer help. Like, he'll probably won't be like a fleet that follows him everywhere, but at least he'll yeah. be on the table. Yeah, because I feel like Luffy would be like, oh, I don't like your hair. That's a no. <laughs> well, he, Luffy's met him and seems to like him just fine, so. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's like, see. So, next one. He tries oh, to, so, he does a barrier. Around himself and Gladius. Like, they're all inside the barrier, and he goes for the throat. Yeah, so basically he's sacrificing himself, which is yeah. again, it's, it's surprisingly, it's not a very, um, you know, it's, it's not a very s- single uh, s- selfish thing to do. It's yeah. 
it's it's actually interesting how this guy, this character is just like you know he's a he's a one team guy, um, a one a one player, a one a one man team. There we go. Yeah, a one man team usually, uh, but you know with the straw hats, he suddenly just says, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna play as a team and do all this stuff like yeah. sacrificing. Like this is the what the third time he's put himself on the line or second yeah. time, something like that. Uh, it's kind of interesting though, like in a, and he was also protecting helping Rebecca during the um, fight in the Coliseum too. So he was doing that also. Like the way Bartolomeo acts, in a way, it's almost like he's like a heel in wrestling. Like he's playing the role of the bad guy. Like he's in the Coliseum, he's doing all this stuff, like just pissing people off. But he's he's mostly doing it just to provoke them. When really he does, he's actually not a bad person. Like he's got a strong sense of honor that he up, that he upholds to. Well, I'm not gonna lie, the people in the Coliseum were assholes. Uh, so I I wasn't really that much of I didn't have a problem with him pissing them off. Well, they they weren't really bad one or the other until Rebecca came around. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Was I think Rebecca? No, but I think Rebecca was was no, she wasn't there yet, right? No, not at that point. But I, like that was like okay. that's when they started like being jerks, though, because like they all hate Rebecca because of her who her grandfather was. Yeah. So first off, that, again, Sims is the father shit. Uh, I don't like that. Two. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably that's probably what made me not care afterwards, at least. So because after that, I was like, yeah, whatever. Because I've seen them get pissed off at Bartolomeo. You can't blame them one bit for that. I, I think I just think I didn't know enough about Bartolomeo, and I remember him just being well, one bicycle guy or whatever. That's the idea. I mean, Bartolomeo was presented like as this big old savage guy and a big, he's being a big jerk to the audience. So we're supposed to like just think this of him, and then that's what makes the whole thing of him being a Luffy fanboy all the more hilarious later. True, and of course, Nico Robin still calls him a chicken, which is kind of funny. Yeah, um, I can't, I can't remember. I think the English version calls, has her calling him a rooster, but still comes about the same thing. Yeah, and of course he uh, he attacks um, Gladius, and they, he explo- uh, and he explodes basically. And yeah. Bartolomeo gets a lot of damage. And it's surprising because this guy could like how do you damage this guy? And it turns out, well, you know, this is how you do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bartolomeo did damage him. He just didn't get the right spot. Well, I mean, I mean like Bartolomeo got damaged himself. Yeah. Oh, you mean Bartolomeo? Can, I didn't mean Gladius. Yeah. Because, well, if you think about it, because Glad- Bartolomeo almost never got like how did, when he when he fought the king. Remember? Because the king had like a super like punch that it was even just as strong as like any of the Shichibukai or the emperors. Yeah. At least at least for that one hit, and it, and the fact that he just got he got it, it was a point blank hit, and it just went back on everyone. It meant that there was no way you could break those barriers. Which is like okay, how do you hurt this guy? You can't, like Gara, yeah. you know? How do you hurt Gara? Yeah. You also have Dellinger unable to do it too. A little bit yeah. later, Don't not the same power level, but still, yeah. like yeah. the trick is it seems to be either get around the barrier, like because um, because like he he only make one so big if he can get around that somehow, but yeah. or like we did here, like be in the barrier with him. Yeah, but like normally, like the problem is back before we learned that he was a big Luffy fanboy. You know, he could he could make the barriers around him at least for that size because it was he wasn't that big, so it did seem like he could he was impossibly strong as long as he had those barriers. True, he would always be on the defensive, but actually not really, because he has this barrier bulldozer that he can do. So yeah. even then, <laughs> of course, I wonder if Armament Hockey could get through that. Because after all, I mean that is p- part of what that's for, like breaking through Devil Fruit powers. True, but we don't know. Like I, I feel like I think I feel like that would kind of destroy. Kind of, I, I feel like we. It, his weaknesses should be a little more creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, way, like, the, like the way Oda did it. Like, yeah. I, you know, I feel like just powering through with hockey is kind of like black. Yeah. You know, bland. It feels too much like Naruto or Bleach. You yeah. know what I'm saying? At the very least, I mean, I wouldn't mind it happening if, as long as it's not easy to do. Like someone, any hockey user can do it. Yeah. I, I just, but I, 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 I always emphasize, even then, I always emphasize, emphasize creativity over just bulldozing. Ironically, because his name, his, his attack is called, bo- like something like bulldozing or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I think Oda did it fine. Like, yeah. No obvious weaknesses. Um, and yeah, a lot of logical out, weaknesses, too. Yeah. And, of course, as you said before, it turns out that he, what he stabbed wasn't... Uh, he's, where Gladius was stabbed wasn't uh, his... His, uh, his neck. Part, but it, it was his yeah, shoulder. Right? Yeah, actually, he was so big, it was hard to get the right spot. Yeah. Um, and, of course, they actually... It's a it's a good reason. Like it wasn't a cop out. I was like, oh, you're right. You know, his, his shape is kind of hard to tell. Like, how would you know what the neck or the yeah. shoulder is? Yep. So... So he sets um, off the wall, which leaves Bartolomeo screaming in agony because he couldn't do it. Yep. Uh, Cavendish is still smiling. I'm not Cavendish. Uh, Hakuba is still sm- uh, smiling. It's kind of weird. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, he tries to get her to release him because he said, "Yeah, we'll just use Hakuba's speed." I'm surprised yeah. that he couldn't use. It. I thought he couldn't. Even, he can't use the speed as Cavendish because it's not. I always thought it was more of a mental thing, not a physical thing. You know. Well, that could very well be it. I mean, Hakuba's not really holding back where Cavendish might be. Well, he's running for his life. I think it doesn't matter at this point if he's holding back. Well, like, that's why 
that's why he's like having Hakuba kind of like come out a little bit. Like Hakuba probably doesn't have the limits on him. Yeah, true. It's probably it's probably Hakuba that's limiting yeah. him. Hakuba is like Cavendish without the brakes on, basically. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, in more ways than one. Um. And let's see. And of course, it explodes, and Baldwin is like, "Oh my gosh, what happened?" And it turns out, yeah, he he did uh he did use ha- uh Hakuba's ability to it would run basically really fast, but at the same time block Nico Robin from getting attacked by Hakuba. Right. So it's kind of it's actually a pretty cool scene. Um, yep. And and Hak- and eventually it's weird. Cavendish so Cavendish sleeps now, but Hak- Hakuba isn't coming out. So I guess Hakuba can only come out you know for a limited amount of time. This is kind of yeah. true with a. Uh, I, I, you know, it was kind of true with the the last time he came out because he 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 basically took down everyone except for Rebecca. Although arguably he thought he may, maybe because he thought Rebecca was already down for the count because she was she yeah, took a while and, more to get up. Um, and then so, he just dropped right after. So maybe he came out. He, maybe maybe Hakuba just is, has stopped coming out because he's realized you know what Cavendish is always going to get in the way. So yeah. might as well just wait to buy my time. Yeah, to, and then um, I can just have more fun later. Yeah, but what, I'm, what I like about this this part is that now Bartomeu is like, you know what? I'm not going to sit by anymore. Now that she's out of the way, I'm going to hit you in the face. Or the head. Yeah. Yep. And I love the movie users right here. The fact that he, it's, a, it's a total homage to... Uh, even even yeah. calls it as such. Like, it's homage yeah. spirit fist. Yeah. And the, the bari bari, you know, pistol. Which basically just a punch with his barrier powers around it. Yeah, oh my god. It's, it's such a great tribute to... Uh... Uh, to to Luffy. Yeah. I still got ways to go, and I become strong. So he even really, he he needs to become stronger. And holy shit, if Bartolomeu with his powers gets stronger, man. Yeah. You know, that's, that's crazy. Of course, like I said, yeah. with Devil Fruit powers, it's, it's never like you yourself said. It's not about raw strength. It's about creativity. Because that's what usually gets that's what gets, gets Luffy by as often as not like figuring out different ways to use his powers. Uh, one way he can do it is to choke people to death. He can just wrap a berry around their heads and make it so they yeah. can't breathe any more air. Yeah. There you go. They run out of air. Uh, and I, I wonder if he can use that when he's under... Well, I don't want to say underwater, but then I forgot devil fruit power, so I don't know if that would work. Well, actually... Well, no, you... Well, the problem is, it's not that the... Is it that devil fruit powers just don't work underwater, or is that the, they just can't... Because it's that they can't swim, but does that mean their powers don't work? I think it depends on the user. Because if he has a berry around him, then the bar technically never reaches his body. Yeah, so that's that could work in that case, but like it, it sometimes depends on the user. Like for example, if Luffy's underwater, he can't move. He can't. He is weak. He can't move, but he can. He can still be stretched out. That's how oh, they. He can still be stretched out. Yeah, that's what they do yeah. in the Arlong arc, for example. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, he's he's ca- he's trapped underwater, and Dami's sister and the other guy there like take his head and stretch it up to the surface so they can give him CPR. Oh, okay, okay. In which case, uh, I think Bob Miller has that advantage. Oh, although uh, one would argue, how how dense is the is the barrier? Because will he sink with the barrier? Will he float with the barrier? Who knows, right? Exactly. So it's it's still he could probably put a barrier around someone else and have them go under, but that's a whole different situation. Yeah. And, anyway. Um, and let's see. And that's, it's just an awesome slip. Was, Oh, go ahead. Oh, it was just awesome him slamming him down the ground. That's just an awesome way to beat someone, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then um, pretty much like. I ain't sure ain't joining force with that annoying lunatic again. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's not a draw. It's like yeah. it's an actual defeat. Like, yeah. You know? uh, at the very least, if it's a draw at all, it's only because like it's a bit of well, no, it's not even that because like I was gonna say because yeah, two of them were down, but Tavid just didn't really get beaten. He just fell asleep afterward. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So now we go back to level four sunflower fields with Diamante and Creos attack. You know, it turns out that you know Creos can't really has trouble with the. It, it actually is a great. It's a great like way to fight Creos because Creos doesn't he only has one leg. So obviously moving the ground a bit would cause him to lose his stance and you know might actually catch him off guard. Yep. Um, and again, he's going for Diamante is going for Rebecca. Yeah, but of course. This is where. Come, I'll yeah. let you do this one because you love Robin. Who comes in to save the day? Nico freaking Robin. Yep. Like I said, the move here she uses here is a little bit of an odd one, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. It's like I think what it is like she's using like she, it's got her hands like it almost like a, like it's a butterfly moth thing, which is what she describes it as moth orchid. And they're like fluttering around. I guess what it is like it because of how his powers work, it's deflecting the sword. Yeah. Um... And then there's also some arms on the sword itself, which probably helps. Yeah. So obviously, this is this is a pretty awesome moment. Uh, Nico Robin's like, "Your mission's over, Rebecca. Thank you for dealing with the key. I shall handle the rest." Yeah. And her smile is awesome. I just love her. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, and actually, I just thought of a kind of a thought right now. I said the whole thing with Diamante is that he's got it set up so you can't really keep your footing with 
even two feet. Now I'm thinking of Robin like putting multiple feet around herself to keep herself steady. Oh yeah, not to mention he can sh she can grow hands on Kiros. Yeah, right. So he give her, her give her him her leg. leg. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, dude. I think we I think we just predicted how this fight was gonna go. <laughs> we'll see if we're right about that. I guess later. Also, I like the fact that Kiros is still calling her Robin Land. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you think about, it, he has no reason not to because yeah, but it's know. still. I still find it funny. It's like just at least good to remember that. Yeah, I, I remember. Th I remember looking at that too. I'm like, yeah, well, because he, he did that with Us Usopp too, and he still thinks Usopp is like the greatest warrior, which is hilarious. Yeah, because he wouldn't have, he, he wouldn't ever hear his confession and all that. If you think about it, if 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 someone like Kiros like get basically like you know admires a guy like Usopp, I mean, you you basically got respect from who is basically the greatest uh, warrior um, of uh, Dressrosa and probably one of the strongest non demo fruit users out there. Yep. To, to get respect to you know get respect from that guy, type of guy like that. I mean, Usopp is literally living his dream. Yep. And like I said the guy is definitely a badass without question on it. And you have to be to be able to do stuff like he did, like cut off his own leg. Uh, and of course, that ends the chapter. Um, but one would one would argue, okay, is Rebecca? You know, because a lot of people didn't like the fact that Rebecca was a damsel in distress. You know, and, and you know the fact is she isn't as experienced as Kiros, and she's or, or um. Or Robin. I mean, she can't. She she fact is she was only she only learned enough to survive the ring, which you right. know it's good. It's a it's a great it's a high level, but it's just you can't beat an executive because even Kiros himself couldn't do it. Right. Or hasn't done it yet. Although one, I'm sure she she'll help out of, uh, eventually. But just yeah, she'll the same. she'll play her part. I'm sure. Uh, and, and but the thing of you, have you had this thing about this, you know woman always being the damsel in distress. Well, here's a woman, Nico Robin, coming in to save the day. Yep. Right. Um, so yeah, Nico Robin and and Kiros versus Diamante. It's a great it's a great battle. And one question: Do you want this the 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 side battles to finish before or after um, going back to Dolphamingo's fight? Not not finishing Dolphamingo's fight, just going back to it. And I think we can probably stand now that all the I think with Gladius we got all the the minor officers down at this point. So I think we all we've got left are like the like the supreme officers, like the big guys: Diamante, Pika. Oh no, wait, wait, Senior Pink's still around. But the straw hats, the ones the straw hats are fighting, are basically the ones that are still up now. I feel like they won't even go to see your pink. Fight. I feel like they would just. I feel like that fight won't even end. It was just like after they beat Dolphamingo, they'll just find they'll just find those two like you know bromancing it up or something. <laughs> yeah, like, with those two, I could see that. With yeah, them, I, I could see like that. I, I feel like they might not even go back to the fight. I think they'll just go back to the fight like after everything's over and be like, oh yeah, we I've, we totally forgot about you two. Oh, so that's what you've been doing the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, but like I said at this point, I think everyone, all the battle except for the actual straw hats, have been taken care of. So we might get a. So next week, we, so somewhere along the way, well, I think we'll get like a brief pickup and where all the other straw hats are at the moment. Yep. All right. So anything else? I think we got ourselves covered. I like I said, it's pretty, pretty good chapter overall. I think like I said Robin's. I I'm hoping this means Robin will be like a direct part in the fight now because he hasn't had, really had a direct fight in a long time. At least not on a one on one. Not not on a one on one respect. He had. Fishman Island, and then th that was about it. All right. I mean, the last time she took a direct role in combat was when she was bitch slapping Spandam. Who wouldn't do that though? And yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then the other otherwise, the only other fight I can think of right offhand. Uh, yeah, yeah, the only other fight I can think of right offhand her, with her otherwise was Skypea. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was chapter seven hundred seventy-three, half and half. Has been our typical manga review. There's no bleach this week because right now Tite Kubo is ill, so we're not we don't have a chapter of bleach to review. But hopefully, um, right before this one came out, we probably got our Attack on Titan one out, so you should be good to go for a while, regardless. I hope you all enjoyed listening and watching, and have a good week. Bye.